much beats the sound of a piano I got from the thrift store. Uh, I think this would be much cooler if I had some high voltage arcs that were going here instead of the speakers. So I think I'm just going to take out the speakers. I'm going to put in these little glass things here with these high voltage arcs. And we're going to use those to sound, play music instead. It's going to be cool. That's a guy that thinks this is going to work out okay. It doesn't. This is how it turns out. But I'm getting ahead of myself. This is where we actually started. So the idea was remove the speakers, put in these glass cylinders, add some high voltage leads and connect it to a circuit that was essentially similar to the same circuit I built before when I built my Bluetooth speaker arc generator. I built the circuit, I uh, made the harness, made some holes in the bottom of the keyboard to run my harness through. I ran everything externally just because I I've learned the hard way not to put a lot of effort into the uh, initial testing build. Just if it doesn't work out the way you want it to, you dump hours and hours into a project that really is just kind of a waste of time. Make some modifications. Get my DIY voltage power supply set to 12 volts. And... Oh yeah, watch it work. So the number of pulses that you see on that screen is gonna be the frequency, and the frequency determines the note, and I think it's a G7. And that's some lower note, a C2 maybe, I don't know. A little bit more soldering. And test. Beautiful. So that high pitched squealing noise will be due to this. So that's some kind of just interference that's happening within the uh, piano. So you see when I hit a key, you see that signal change. So that's gonna be the output signal that goes to the speaker. So what I'm planning on doing is I'm gonna see if I can use maybe a resistor to pull that down because this right here is going to be causing that interference that high pitch squealing we just heard and I want to pull this down to here when I'm not pushing a key and as soon as I press the key we should see it spike up like that so now I'm going to see if I can just bring this down to the zero mark here if possible so I'm going to test out an idea uh, I put a little filter capacity just in series there with the gate driver circuit now that I've done that, but now when I push this, it does what a capacitor does. So now it's acting like AC, which is realistically fine, because all I'm trying to do is turn on and off the transistor gate. Now, when I have the voltage go positive, the gate will turn on. But by going negative, it, it ensures that my gate's going to be turned off, and it's going to help to prevent any unwanted action from that transistor and it'll just help to regulate um, that saturation time and verify our cutoff. Uh, yeah, so we'll see how that goes. So we got it working a little bit better at first. But eventually after a few more tries, it, it kind of just stopped outputting the way I wanted it to. And I think what happened is I had a high voltage arc that must have gone back into the circuitry inside the piano and it must have cooked something because after a while it kind of just started grunting. So I spent like two or three nights trying to make this work. I tried different circuit designs. And I tried different configurations, I tried different ignition coils, I tried redesigning the way that the arc jumped to the ground, and I, I really couldn't get it to work at all, and I was getting pretty frustrated. So in a last-ditched effort to try to prevent any other frequency interference, I taped up the bottom of the in, or the internals inside of the keyboard to try to prevent interference, but honestly, this didn't even work, didn't even do anything. So I just ended up getting pretty pissed off and I decided to start from scratch, but first I had to let off a little steam. This was really fun, not gonna lie.
So, now, I started from scratch. I designed the circuit from the ground up instead of buying something that somebody else already designed. So, really simple, just using a 555 timer and a uh, few other components, including a variable resistor, to be able to achieve the frequency out that I wanted to, to drive that ignition coil for my different notes for my little keyboard. Uh, if anybody wanted to design their own, there's what it looks like. Put it together. I've designed these ones before. They're a pretty straightforward circuit to build. Um, I built my first one in a set of three. You can see I'm testing out the frequency and the pulses look nice and clear. Works really good. So I installed a little case just to prevent it from falling apart on me. Use my soldering iron just to make little holes in the box. I've got pretty good ventilation in my office. I wouldn't recommend doing this in your own house. It's pretty stinky, but I got fans and stuff everywhere. So yeah, at least I'll make you think I do. So it does a good job to install a little box, it prevents the circuit from shorting on itself. I couldn't tell you the number of times I've tried to build something and just tried it with a raw circuit and it ends up shortened and touching the table or something bad. So definitely build like a little casing for it. it only takes like 20 minutes and uh, gives you that peace of mind. Now, anytime you're dealing with high voltage, there's always a chance you can actually zap yourself even on just the little tuning knobs there. So it's a good idea to add some kind of little insulation or cover. Um, I'm not telling you this because I'm giving you a tutorial to build it. I don't want you to build this. You can zap yourself. Ignition coils can kill you. So uh, just watch me build it, but um, more just for hashtag life advice. Yeah, let's say hashtag life advice. Boop. Now after reassembly, you always test to make sure that it still works. So now just a quick test on the final assembly. Looks like it works pretty good. That's the frequency there. I'm not sure what note that is. So okay, my ignition coil works. I, I tune it to my guitar tuner I have on my phone. I label the tuning knob positions just so that I could uh, change the notes as I go. Oh, that sounds so nice. Not gonna lie, after having so many problems with the previous keyboard, this felt really good to hear this. Now I need to build the speaker array and the housing assembly. I kind of want to make this look kind of steampunky with a whole bunch of like vacuum tubes sticking up that had the arcs in them. So I took some old Jones bottles that we used for our movie nights and uh, I drilled some holes in the sides for the high current leads. I didn't want them going to the neck because I didn't want the leads sitting close enough together that the arc could happen down in the neck. I took an old bin lid and I labeled the positions I had the bottles on and uh, decided to drill some holes in them. Now I didn't really even measure these bottle positions. This is all kind of just eyeballed. Um, yeah. Oh my God, that was so close. Fell into the bucket of water. Oh, that was amazing. That's the fire bucket. Always have a fire bucket. They're the best. I didn't really have a pre-made plan for this. Kind of just going off the top of my head. Um, used some copper wire. Recycled it from another project. Just to make my high voltage leads go into the bottle. Cleaned up the bottles a little bit. Installed the leads into the bottle and taped them shut. And uh, kind of gives me that cool look I was going for. Yeah, it works awesome. Now notice that big tank I got on the left side of the screen there? That's helium. So I inject the helium into the bottles while I'm going to be playing the piano uh, with this manifold that I built here. So essentially this is to let different gases into these bottles just so I can change the color of the arc and the electrical resistance of the air so I can get different sounds as well as different colors. But uh, that's something I'll probably fine tune in a future video. I initially put some effort in trying to make this look good, but eventually I kind of reverted to duct tape as I ran out of time and patience to really invest myself deeply in this project with Christmas being so close. Merry Christmas, by the way. I'm not doing a Christmas video. This is your Christmas video. It's not Christmas themed. Merry Christmas. So after installing the bottles, installing the circuitry, now I need to put the ignition coils in. 
these are pretty tight fit. Um, they didn't want to go in great. I was a little concerned after I installed these that the high voltage might end up arcing to some of my control circuit. Uh, I did what I could to kind of move everything away from each other, but yeah, we'll see how it goes. Definitely feel a little nervous about that, but just ignoring that feeling right now. I installed buttons onto the wires and glued them down. Kind of below where the tuning knobs are. Installed the last couple knobs and we're ready for a quick test. But first I got to push the buttons because I love pushing buttons. Ugh, buttons. Okay, first test run of this. So it's a little bit dark in here. I got my lighting turned off just so you can see the arcs a little bit better in here. So this is the first time I've hooked it up. I haven't tested it yet since I assembled it. So this could probably go really bad, but might go really good. Fingers crossed. So first things first, connect my ground. You know, inject the helium into the manifold. So the bottles fill. Now the bottle should have a fairly decent dose of helium inside of them now. So remember the helium lowers the electrical resistance inside the bottles. So hopefully it'll just help make it so that the arc is uh, more exaggerated, looks cooler, it's brighter, uh, and there's less chance of arcing happening inside the box. So here we go, hook up the power. I was pretty nervous, as I say, I was pretty confident that some of the high voltage arcs would end up jumping to some okay. of my control circuitry okay. and uh, their whole bunch of smoke would probably come out of here, but it, uh, it didn't. So it was a little quiet at first. This was due to, I sealed off the bottles pretty much completely just to prevent the helium from escaping. So what I ended up doing is going back into my soldering iron and actually poking these little holes in the sides right by where the high voltage leads are just to allow the little pulses to escape so it was a little bit louder. Uh, I think I'm going to have to cut some holes in these bottles and maybe put a little piece of paper over top of it, kind of like a little speaker membrane so that the noise travels a little bit better and I don't lose so much helium. So the typical piano, without getting into flats and sharps, typically like the white keys, are seven of them, right? So A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and then it repeats. So I'm gonna use a uh, tuner to tune these to the piano scale, and I'm gonna try some chords and see how that sounds. For the final song to play on this piano, I felt like there was only one that would be appropriate enough to actually be able to, uh, to give it a good finale. Can you guess what it is? Put it in the comments if you know what song this is. So overall, we're pretty good. I uh, need to make it a little bit louder. Maybe if I cut some holes in the bottles, but maybe it's a project for another time. So yeah, this is much better than the other piano, which is dead now, way dead, super dead, stupid so dead. piano.